heavily armored, packing massive firepower, and able to traverse even the roughest terrain at high speed. Today's frontline battle tanks are the most fearsome of weapons. In modern land warfare, tanks lead the charge. Among today's armies, the main battle tanks of four countries stand at the forefront of technology and design. The British Challenger II, the American M1 Abrams, the French Leclerc, and German Leopard II. Each is a marvel of military design, combining its own unique weaponry, exotic armor, and sophisticated command and control systems. They've never faced each other in combat, if they did, it would surely be a formidable fight. From Britain, the Challenger II, a highly reliable and extremely capable heavy tank. The Challenger II is the latest main battle tank produced by the pioneers of tank design. The British Army first introduced tanks to the battlefield in 1916 and have played an important role in their development ever since. The Challenger traces its heritage back to Britain's Chieftain tank. When the Chieftain entered service in 1966, it was the most heavily armored of all main battle tanks. With an emphasis on armored protection, the Chieftain's turret was carefully contoured to optimize the thick steel of its armor. The Chieftain balanced its superb protection with a powerful 120 mm gun, much larger than the 105 mm guns common to most tanks of the 1960s and 70s. But thick steel armor makes tanks heavy and slow, and the Chieftain was guilty on both counts. Britain needed a faster, more sophisticated tank. During the 1970s, under the codename Burlington, British designers developed a radical new type of tank armor. This complex composite armor became known as Chobham armor, named after the city in which it was developed. How it works and what exactly it's made from remain top secret, but it is highly effective. Most experts believe the armor consists of complex layers of metal and advanced ceramics. When the Challenger 1 appeared in the 1980s, it was the first British tank to incorporate this highly effective protection. Chobham armor made the Challenger nearly invulnerable to frontal attack from deadly high explosive anti-tank or heat rounds. Besides its enhanced protection, the Challenger was more mobile than the Chieftain. A 1,200 horsepower diesel engine and advanced suspension system gave the tank a top speed of 35 miles per hour and a smooth ride despite obstructions and rough terrain. One of the most important advances in tank design in the 1980s was in gunfire controls, which permitted the tank to fire on the move. The heavily armored turret of the Challenger weighs 20 tons, yet it must be moved with extreme precision to hit targets a mile or more away. In 1994, the Challenger II entered service in the British Army. The Challenger II has over 150 improvements to its predecessor, the Challenger I, and many entirely new features, such as its turret design. The Challenger II has even more sophisticated fire controls than its forerunner. A digital fire control computer controls the commander's sight, the laser rangefinder, and thermal imaging system for unprecedented accuracy. 
the Challenger II's stabilized 120 millimeter gun can fire a wide variety of munitions. Britain has a long history of supplying tanks to foreign armies. But many armies in the developing world cannot afford highly complex and expensive tanks. Besides producing the Challenger for the British Army, Elvis Vickers also designed less sophisticated tanks specifically for export. The Vickers Mark 7 is an example of British-German industrial cooperation with a Vickers design turret and a German Leopard 2 hull. Britain's strong traditions in tank design have led to critical technological breakthroughs like Chobham Armour and the formidable Challenger II, one of only a handful of modern tanks that can truly dominate a battlefield. Across the hot, dusty prairies of Texas, the U.S. Army wages mock combat in one of the world's most formidable tanks, the M1 Abrams, named after the legendary General Creighton Abrams. General Abrams is known for his hard-charging leadership of the 37th Tank Battalion during World War II. Today, American tanks are much more powerful, better protected, and much faster than the Sherman tanks that Abrams commanded. The Sherman was armed with a rifled 75 millimeter gun with just one third the force of the 120 millimeter smooth bore gun found on the M1 Abrams. The Abrams advanced composite armor provides 12 times greater protection than the Sherman's mere two inches of steel armor plating. At 25 miles per hour on roads, the Sherman was fast for its day. But the Abrams can travel nearly twice as fast, even in rough terrain. A 1,500 horsepower gas turbine engine, similar to those used by attack helicopters, provides the muscle. The increased speed causes you to be able to do a lot more things than you normally could with the, uh, the slower M60 series. And plus it opens up some terrain to you that you can use as high speed avenues of approach which you didn't have before. Development of the Abrams began in the early 1970s to replace the M60 Patton. Newly developed guided anti-tank missiles made protection a major priority in the Abrams design. Advanced composite armor, similar to Britain's Chobham armor, was used to counter the missile threat and gives the Abrams its distinct slab-sided appearance. To protect the crew from a mishap with its own ammunition, the rounds are housed in a compartment at the rear of the turret with blast doors that separate and safeguard the crew. Should the ammunition be ignited by enemy fire, the explosion is vented upward away from the crew. This once secret test footage demonstrates that in spite of detonation, the blast doors protect the crew from the fire. While crew survivability was at the center of the Abrams design, additional attention was put toward making the tank more fightable. Thus, the other key aspect of the M1's design was its weapon system. Previous generations of tanks had to stop to fire, while the Abrams and other modern tanks can fire on the move. The computer-controlled stabilization system keeps the gun aimed at the same point, no matter how much the tank is jostled around by the rough terrain. 
N1 is really effective with the stabilization system, which is built in, whereas on the old tanks, it took a lot of short halts where you stop, move, and stop, move. Of course, with the M1, you can continue to ride anywhere from 30 to 35 miles per hour and fire and get a first round hit. Several systems are employed to ensure the accuracy of the gun. A muzzle reference system measures barrel warp caused by the heat of repeated firings. A wind sensor checks for crosswinds that would cause a round to go astray. And a laser rangefinder precisely measures the distance to within inches of the target. The fire control computer combines data from these systems to compute a real-time firing solution that is highly accurate even at ranges greater than one mile. The speeds of kills on a modern battlefield are going to be totally different than they used to be where you would shoot multiple times and uh, not get hits. And, uh, and nowadays, uh, you have over a 90% probability of hit even while moving. Modern electronic systems simplify the work of the tank crew. But to survive in today's fast-paced battles, tankers must hit their targets much faster and with greater accuracy than ever before. Training stresses the need for both speed and accuracy. The target will come up and stay exposed depending what type of engagement it is, anywhere from 40 to 50 seconds. And then they will uh, be expected to kill it within 12 seconds. You have about five seconds reload time for the crew in case they have to fire a second round. But normally we get them on the first round. The Abrams gun site employs a thermal imager able to sense the minute temperature differences between man-made objects like tanks and the natural environment. This enables them to identify enemy tanks at night or when they are hidden by smoke or camouflage. Innovations in tank design since World War II allowed tank crews to drop in size from five men to four. We have a driver. His basic uh, job is to seek positions. Uh, that's in the process of uh, handling the driving portion. And we have the loader, he basically take care of the area watch and also the rear uh, section of the tank. And we have the gunner, uh, he's to identify and acquire targets and fire them as well. And myself, I'm the tank command, I pretty much keep control and uh, overwatch over each other position. Heavily armored. Packing massive firepower and able to traverse even the roughest terrain at high speed. Today's frontline battle tanks are the most fearsome of weapons. In modern land warfare, tanks lead the charge. Among today's armies, the main battle tanks of four countries stand at the forefront of technology and design. The British Challenger II, the American M1 Abrams, the French Leclerc, and German Leopard II. Each is a marvel of military design, combining its own unique weaponry, exotic armor, and sophisticated command and control systems. They've never faced each other in combat, if they did, it would surely be a formidable fight. From Britain, the Challenger II, a highly reliable and extremely capable heavy tank. The Challenger II is the latest main battle tank produced by the pioneers of tank design. The British Army first introduced tanks to the battlefield in 1916 and have played an important role in their development ever since. The long gun of the Leclerc provides the rounds a higher muzzle velocity, affording a greater range.
A 7.62 millimeter machine gun sits atop the turret and is controlled from within the tank. It is also fitted with a larger 12.7 millimeter coaxial machine gun. The Leclerc's fire control system can track six targets at once, providing real-time imaging from all the tank's sensors and sights. This system can be operated independently by the gunner or the commander. A sophisticated battle management system integrates data from other tanks and upper levels of command. Tank crews no longer communicate simply by radio, but exchange critical information through digital data systems. The Leclerc was designed around a centralized computer architecture. In battle, the Leclerc is in constant communication with other armored vehicles in its unit. This allows the crew to be aware of the precise location, fuel status, remaining ammunition, and other relevant information for each vehicle in their battle unit. Advances in anti-tank weapons developed so quickly. Heavily armored. Packing massive firepower. And able to traverse even the roughest terrain at high speed. Today's frontline battle tanks are the most fearsome of weapons. In modern land warfare, tanks lead the charge. Among today's armies, the main battle tanks of four countries stand at the forefront of technology and design. The British Challenger II, the American M1 Abrams, the French Leclerc, and German Leopard II. Each is a marvel of military design, combining its own unique weaponry, exotic armor, and sophisticated command and control systems. They've never faced each other in combat, if they did, it would surely be a formidable fight. From Britain, the Challenger II, a highly reliable and extremely capable heavy tank. The Challenger II is the latest main battle tank produced by the pioneers of tank design. The British Army first introduced tanks to the battlefield in 1916 and have played an important role in their development ever since. Germany has always been known for their superior tank divisions, which often went head-to-head -head with the world's most powerful armies. Integrating advancements in firepower and armored protection, Germany's latest development in tank design is the fearsome Leopard II. Tanks were the spearhead of the German Blitzkrieg in World War II. The legendary Tiger and Panther were among the most powerful tanks to roam the European battlefields during the final years of the war. Today they stand as silent reminders of the great armored clashes like Kursk, Normandy, and the Battle of the Bulge. Their place has been taken in the modern Bundeswehr by tanks of the Leopard family, the Leopard I and the Leopard II. The Leopard I was the first German tank built after the Second World War. It entered service with the Bundeswehr in 1965. Compared to its wartime antecedents, it was much better armed. The Leopard I's main weapon was a rifled 105mm gun, 
capable of hitting enemy tanks at ranges of over a mile and a half. The Leopard 1 was considerably more mobile than the tanks of World War II, with road speeds up to 35 miles an hour. This highly regarded design was the most widely distributed tank type in NATO service in its day, with over 4,000 produced. The Leopard 1 also formed the basis for the Gepard, an anti-aircraft vehicle armed with a radar-directed twin 35mm cannon system. In the 1970s, the German army began development of a new generation tank called the Leopard II. Though sharing a common name with its predecessor, the Leopard II was in fact a whole new design and considered by many to be the best tank built today. Like the Abrams and Challenger II, the Leopard II is protected by a thick hide of third generation composite armor. The use of reactive armor atop the turret provides the Leopard II superior protection to the latest in top attack anti-tank munitions. The Leopard II, like its contemporaries, is fitted with a 120 mm smooth bore gun, but with a longer barrel length, it can fire a 20 pound projectile at speeds of over a mile per second. Precision is ensured by a laser rangefinder and a sophisticated stabilization system. The commander's stabilized panoramic periscope is slaved to the tank's fire control system. This allows the periscope to be used to aim the tank's weapons. The Leopard 2's rough exterior appearance belies its internal complexity. In addition to the driver, there are three crewmen. The loader is responsible for handling the tank's ammunition. The gunner aims the 120 millimeter gun and operates the fire controls. And the commander acquires targets and directs the rest of the crew in their duties. Like the Leclerc, the Leopard 2 can employ smoke grenades to mask its position. Despite the technical sophistication of modern tanks, the life of a tank crewman is arduous. There is ammunition to be loaded and a host of other chores to keep a machine like the Leopard 2 in good operating condition. Tanks are also expensive to operate, even in peacetime. A tank will wear out a set of tracks every 2,000 miles, and they cost over $50,000 to replace. Modern tanks are too heavy to be made amphibious, so rivers are a major obstruction. To circumvent this problem, the Leopard 2 can snorkel underwater with the crew sealed inside the vehicle, employing a special tube to provide air to the engine and crew. High speed makes a tank difficult to hit during combat. The Leopard 2 can attain cross-country speeds up to 45 miles per hour with its torsion bar suspension dampening the jostling of rough terrain. The Leopard 2, perhaps the best combination of armor and firepower on today's battlefield, proudly carries on Germany's excellence in tank design. The main battle tank is an awesome combination of firepower, armored protection, and cross-country mobility. The tank remains the central element in all major armies. These powerful machines form an important part of military might.